Hello and welcome to Shredder Zoo. Today we're taking a look at one of the most important, if controversial, prehistoric bird discoveries. This is Ichthyornis, a small seabird that lived in North America during the Cretaceous period, about 95 to 83.5 million years ago. It is thought that the Ichthyornis was the Cretaceous ecological equivalent of modern seabirds such as gulls. An average specimen was the size of a pigeon, 24 centimetres, that's 9.4 inches long, with a skeletal wingspan, that's not taking the feathers into account, of around 43 centimetres, about 17 inches, although there is considerable size variation among known specimens. It's unknown how big the flight feathers were, as no fossil remains have been found. Looking at the model here in Ark, it seems that it is a bit too large, and I'm not too sure about the position the bird holds its head. I've seen pictures of reconstructions that make it look more like a traditional gull. The name Ichthyornis means fish bird, and comes from its rounded vertebrae which is similar to some types of fish. The Ichthyornis has a very important history, but its discovery did spark some controversy. It was first discovered in 1870 by Benjamin Franklin Mudge, a professor from Kansas State Agricultural College who recovered the initial fossils from the North Fork of the Solomon River in Kansas, United States. At this time, the Bone Wars was in full swing. This was a period of intense fossil collecting by two rival scientists, Charles Nathaniel Marsh and Edward Drinker Cope. The two men rushed to find and name more new species than the other, often employing underhand tactics to beat each other. Benjamin Franklin Mudge was a prolific fossil collector, and he would send his discoveries to Cope for analysis. But he had been a friend of Marsh in his younger years. Marsh contacted Mudge and asked him to send any new discoveries to him instead of Cope. To sweeten the deal, Marsh offered to do this for free, and promised to give Mudge sole credit for the discovery. When Mudge received Marsh's letter, the first ichthyornis specimen was already prepared for shipping to Cope. He changed the address on the crate, and it was sent to Marsh instead. During the rush to identify new species, both Marsh and Cope often missed details or made mistakes. In the case of Marsh and the Ichthyornis, Marsh failed to realise the significance of the find. He also misidentified it. Marsh thought that he had the remains of two creatures. The skeleton he thought belonged to a bird, but there were also long jaws that had sharp teeth included with the skeleton. At this time, Marsh thought that these belonged to some reptile, possibly something like a small mosasaur. By early in 1873, Marsh had recognised his error. Through further preparation and exposure of the skull bones from the rock, he found that the tooth jaws must have come from the bird itself, and not a marine reptile. Ichthyornis became the first bird known to have had teeth within its jaws. For clarity, while Archaeopteryx was named in 1861 and was the first bird to be known from the Mesozoic Age, the genus was not known to have had teeth as well until a specimen with a skull was described in 1884. Soon after these discoveries, Ichthyornis was recognised for its significance to the theory of evolution recently published by Charles Darwin. Darwin himself told Marsh in an 1880 letter that Ichthyornis and Hesperonis offered the best support for the theory of evolution since he had first published On the Origin of Species in 1859. Charles Darwin's book had upset a lot of people, particularly those with strong religious views who saw it as a challenge to the teachings of the Christian Bible. And now a discovery of a nearly modern bird with reptilian teeth stirred those fears. One Yale student described various men and women urging Marsh to conceal Ichthyornis from the public because it lent too much support to the evolutionary theory. Many accused Marsh of having tampered with the fossils or intentionally creating a hoax by associating reptilian jaws with the body of a bird, accusations that continue to surface even as late as 1967. However, an overwhelming majority of researchers have demonstrated that Marsh's interpretation of the fossils was correct. Ichthyornis is now known by many specimens. In fact, it is one of the best represented fossil birds currently known. Ichthyornis lived along the coastline of the old Western Interior Seaway. This was a shallow sea that submerged most of central North America during the late Cretaceous. 
By the time of Ichthyornis, birds have become competent flyers. The wing structure of Ichthyornis is more or less the same as in modern bird forms, meaning that the wings were capable of performing efficient flight strokes. The sternum of Ichthyornis also displays a strongly developed keel-like growth that projects forward. This bone would have been the main attachment point for strong pectoral muscles that would have enabled repetitive flapping of the wings to keep the bird in the air. The teeth were curved inwards and would have been ideal for gripping onto marine organisms. Well that's all I have for you this week, thank you so much for watching. As always I hope you've enjoyed the video and you've learned something new. If you did please let me know by liking the video and leaving a comment down below. And I hope to see you next time here at Shredder Zoo. Goodbye.